Hello everyone, this is Erin with the Animotions team. Um, today, I am going to be taking one of the really adorable designs that Jamie, my team member, um, put together for one of our 3D face masks for the app. She's got quite a spread here of really, really nice concepts that I get to choose from. So I am going to be picking a, um, a final design out of all of these, and then I'm going to be showing you how to convert that design into something that the 3D modelers will be able to use. So first, I just want to mention how difficult it really was for me to even narrow down what features of these I really liked, just because all of them are really, really charming in their own ways. Um, when I watched Jamie's video, she mentioned that she really liked the color scheme of this one here, but she might want to try the hair from this first one. And just because uh, I had such a hard time narrowing it down, I think I'm going to go ahead and try that and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm working in a program called Paint Tool Sci. Um, it's a little different from Photoshop, but it is very, very similar. Um, it's got all the same kind of tools. So I'm going to go up to File, hit New, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm in pixels. And I like to have like a, a big square for my canvas. So I'm just going to do 2000 by 2000 for now. And I'm going to hit Control S to save. And I will go ahead and save it in this same folder. And I will call it reference image underscore unicorn. So now I'm going to go ahead and take just a couple of these off of this little example sheet, just so I have them in my own canvas. I like the color palette of this one and some of the features of this one here. All right, so now that I have these two here that I will be referencing, I'm gonna go ahead and create a more detailed sketch of um, what I want the final design to be. And then we can take it from there. So what I've done first is I have actually created just a guide, um, sort of like a, a, a circle that I've got some guidelines on that I'm just going to use as reference points when I create the actual head shape of the sketch. Oops, I just realized that these are on the same layer, so I'm going to select it and hit Control X and Control V, and that will take that off and put that on a new layer just so that I still have my reference images. There we go. Now we will put a new layer on top of this and lower the opacity so that I can uh, draw right on top of that. All right. Now that I have this base sketch um, sort of ready, um, just a basic horse-shaped face, um, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some of the features um, to make it unique. So I'm going to be taking the hair and the horn, I believe, from this design, and then we will steal the color scheme from this one after we finish that. So what I'm going to do first is that while I've got my base layer here, I'm going to lower its opacity and uh, add another layer on top of that so that I can just draw my features right on top without messing with the layer underneath. Now I've got a basic cone shape for that horn, um, but I know it needs a little bit of puffiness to it to make each of those little rows um, distinct. So now that I've got this shape, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my base layer, and I'm just going to lower the opacity, add another layer on top. All right, so we've got a nice spiraled horn now. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the layer underneath, 
and drop it down so that we've just got our horn without that cone as a reference. Now I will go ahead and do the hair. Just because I want to go ahead and keep the horn separate from the base still, I'm still going to go ahead and do what I did last time and just lower the opacity, add another layer on top. Okay, so now I've got the hair sketched out. I'll go ahead and increase the opacity of the horn and I'm gonna erase the part of it that the hair is covering up. And I will do the same thing for the base. Okay, so we've got a more detailed sketch here. I'm gonna go ahead and combine my layers so that they are all on one layer and we can scooch it around. So let's go ahead and see how that color scheme is gonna look with this design. And then from there, I will think about what I wanna do with the, um, the horse's snout. Like, do I want it to have a stripe like this one or maybe taper off the way this one does? Um, I'm not sure if I want it to have freckles or if I want just that little block of blush. So we will see. Um, in Psy, what you can do, um, just as a nice little trick, is you can create a new layer and change the mode of it from normal to multiply. And what that'll do is it will basically just make the color on top of it affect the layer underneath differently so that you can color on it while still seeing the layer below. So that's what I'm going to do first is uh, I eyedroppered this color here of the cheek and I'm going to go through the sketch and add uh, some color to it. All right, before I move forward, uh, one thing I just want to mention is that I want to keep all of the colors um, of like the skin, the hair, the details. I want all of that to be separate um, so that I can change it a little bit easier if I don't end up liking how it looks first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have all of them have their own layer. Um, and just so that we can keep track of that in my little um, layer view over here, I'm going to go ahead and rename everything. So layer three, I will call my sketch. And then layer four, we will call skin. I know that, you know, this is an actual skin. The horse would have hair if it were, <laughs> if it were a real animal, but just for my own sake, I'm calling that the skin. And we will go ahead and make a hair layer change that to multiply just like we did for the skin when we first started and then we will do a details layer where I will color the eyes the horn um, the eyebrows the inner ear and then the, the little nose can't forget to change that to multiply too okay so now I'm gonna get started with the hair Jamie kind of created this nice little gradient here so I think um, since uh, this design has the colors more blocked out in um, chunks, I'm going to go ahead and have it be that way, but I'm going to uh, use the gradient colors instead. Okay, I like how that hair looks. So now I will move on to the details. I think I want to go ahead and try out this style of nose first, um, where it's a little bit lighter than the rest of the face, um, and it's got like a little stripe. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. And just since I'm going to be doing that on the actual um, nose part, I'm going to switch over to my skin layer, and I'm going to hit preserve opacity up here just so that it doesn't um, go beyond the layer. I'll show you what that does. See, I, I can only draw on where I've already drawn, but if I were to turn that off, I could draw wherever. So I want that to be locked before I move forward. So I'm going to select this color with the eyedropper, and then I'm going to raise the 
value just a little bit and then the shade turn it a little bit brighter yeah that looks pretty good that's pretty cute I think I like how that looks okay so now I'll move on to the rest of the details on the actual details layer now one thing that I'm noticing about this color scheme is that without that pop of purple right here, it does look a little bit too, well, it's not as visually interesting as it could be. So what I want to do is I want to take this purple over here, but I think I'm going to actually increase the warmth a little bit, just since the whole rest of this color scheme is pretty cool. Um, I think it could be a little bit warmer on this purple, and that might add a nice bit of um, emphasis so let's see how that looks we'll go ahead and do the stripes on the horn first okay I know on the horn I want it to have a two-tone sort of thing like how Jamie has done with this design here but I'm not sure what color I want to go with this purple so I think what I'm going to try is um, scooch the slider again for the color and get it even warmer than I did before, but also maybe lighten it up a little bit too. So we've got kind of a pink color. Let's see how that looks. You know what? The more I'm looking at this horn, the more I'm realizing that I th a simple cone-shaped horn might actually work better because the stripes in the horn are clashing a lot with the stripes in the hair. And that wasn't a problem in Jamie's original design for this one um, because the hair did not have those stripes in this, in this set here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this horn back to a cone shape and then we'll go from there for the colors. So I will go ahead and erase this layer. And I'm going to go ahead and hide all the rest of my color layers for right now and then lower the opacity of my sketch so I can draw the um, the new horn on a new layer. Okay, so now that I have that simple cone, I'm just going to go on to my sketch layer um, and erase the part of the old horn. I'll increase the opacity of my sketch and merge those two layers again. So we have everything on one. Awesome looking great. So now I will go ahead and re-add the hair and the skin layers and since the horn before occupied a little bit different space um, I'm just going to need to clean up the hair a little bit. There we go. Now let's go ahead and try that warmer purple color with this horn and see how that looks. I like that a lot better than I did before. However, I think it still needs a little something. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to take another feature of this design. If you can see, Jamie's got a slight gradient in this horn as well instead of the solid block stripes that this one has. So I want to see how that's going to look. Um, I will uh, select a color that is much, much warmer than the purple. Um, we'll scooch it all the way over here to even a, a reddish sort of pink, but maybe make it a little bit lighter so it's not super saturated. And I will preserve opacity for my layer and add the light color to the very tip of the horn. Okay, I really like that. I think that that's what we're going to be going for here. So now what we can do is figure out what color we want the eyes to be. Since the whole rest of the horse um, is uh, this, these soft sorts of greens and blues and purples, um, and we've got this sort of brighter color here, I think it would be good to have the eyes reflect that color. So I'm actually going to go down to my skin layer and erase where the eyes and the eyebrows are. And I will also do the same for the inner ear. 
just because I don't want the multiply layer to interact with those colors. Okay, so now I'll go back to my details layer and unselect preserve opacity because we need to add some more colors here. And let's go ahead and do the eyes. I made sure to have the lower horn color selected and let's see how that looks. I quite like that. I think that looks really cute. For the eyebrows, I really like this sort of darker bluish purple color. Um, so I wanna see if that is gonna be the color for us. So I've got that selected and we'll see how that looks on the brows. Oh yes, I think that looks very nice. Um, one thing that you can keep in mind when you're building color schemes for your designs is that it's nice to um, play off of uh, the different colors that you've already selected um, with, instead of adding additional colors. Um, so since I've got this nice pink here, I am going to play off of that for the inner ear. But I don't think that this is the best color for it just because it's very, very saturated. Um, and it looks a little bit um, too dark uh, when it's against our skin color. So what I'm gonna do is while I have that same color selected, I'm actually gonna just pull up the shade value so that it is a little lighter. It's still that same pink color, but it's just light. We'll see how that looks. I do like that. I think it's a little better than the, the original color, but I wanna push it even further. So since I've already um, uh, drawn the uh, color, I'm just gonna to go to Preserve Opacity. We will slide the shade up even further for that pink, and let's see how it looks. Much better. I really like that. Now the last thing I have to figure out is if I want um, a nice little blocked out blush or if I want freckles. What I'm going to do for that is I'm actually going to go ahead and make both and then I'm going to see what they look like side by side and see which one I like better. First, I'm going to create a new layer on top of my details layer and I am not going to be changing the, um, uh, the, val the mode. I'm going to leave it at normal just because I want the colors to just be right on top. I don't want them to interact with the colors underneath. And we will go ahead and do the little blush first. I think that this pink might actually make a nice blush. So let's see how that looks. And I will rename this layer blush. Okay. So now I would like to duplicate this image. Um, and an easy way to do that in Psy, um, it may work in a similar way to Photoshop as well is to put all of your layers that you've got here inside of a folder. I've actually already set that up. Um, my set one folder is uh, where all of these layers are located. You can see when I close it, they all disappear. I've only got my reference layer. Um, and then if I hit the eye on the whole folder, my whole sketch is gone. So now that I have it in a folder, let me actually show you how to do that first. It's just a little folder button up here to create a new one. Um, but since I want to duplicate all the different layers in this folder, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click and hold and drag it up to the new layer button. And what that's going to do is it's going to duplicate the entire folder right on top of the old one. So see, it's got set one and then in parentheses two. That's because it duplicated the set one. So we are going to have that one selected, scooch it over and we've got it right next to our other one. So now what we can do is we can delete that blush layer and add a new layer and call it freckles. Now let's see what that would look like. I think that maybe this sort of um, kind of medium color between the darker bluish purple and the more green color in the hair, I think this one would be a, a good sort of balance for the freckles. So let's try that. So seeing both of these together, I think that I actually like the freckles one better. So that is gonna be the design that I am settled on for this, and we can go ahead and start creating a reference image for it. 
I will go ahead and delete my first set just because I have this design that I know I'm going to be working with. So first what I'm going to do just for organization's sake is to rename the remaining um, things in my little layer outliner here. So I'm going to select my layer one where my references are. I'm going to go ahead and call that refs. And then the uh, folder with my um, final sketch in here, I will call final sketch. Now what I want to do is create a new folder and I will call that images. Okay, so you'll notice that when you first create a folder, you can't do anything on it because there is not an actual layer inside of the folder yet. Um, so what you need to do is while you have your folder selected, you just hit new layer and the layer will just add itself right into that folder and you can actually start drawing. So the most important angle for your reference image is pretty much always going to be the front angle. Um, unless it's something, you know, special or particular that you're making, but it's almost always going to be the front. So that is what I would suggest you start with because all the rest of those angles should be working for that front angle, if that makes sense. Like you don't want to design it from the side and then try to make it work for the front only to find that it looks a little wonky that way because the side proportions um, don't translate very well to the front. Um, so that's why I would recommend starting with the front first. So that's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to draw the base um, and I will make sure that that is perfectly symmetrical. Um, and then we will start with the rest of the details. So let's get going. Again, I start off with just a few guidelines. I'm going to lower that opacity and add another layer on top. I'm also going to change my color to something a little darker so it's easier to see. What I'm going to do for this um, is a little digital technique that um, you could do with a traditional method. It, it would just be a little bit more difficult, but I'm basically just going to draw one side of the face and then I'm going to duplicate that side and flip it horizontally so that it um, perfectly aligns for the other side. Um, that's just a nice little digital art trick that you can do. Um, it's very useful, especially when you're working with a perfectly symmetrical design. And I know that the rest of my, um, my horse with the hair uh, in particular is not symmetrical, so I'm only going to be doing that for the actual face part. Okay. So now that we have the first half of our face drawn from the front, um, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. Um, just like how you um, create a duplicate of the folder, it's basically the same thing that you do um, only for the layer. So you grab and click and hold the layer and drag it over to new layer. And there we go, it's a duplicate. So then I'm gonna go over to the um, uh, transform options and I'm gonna do flip horizontally. It flips it over the Y axis and we will drag it into position. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe scooch a little bit more. There we go. And I'll draw kind of the rough shape of the snout. Okay, now that I've merged everything onto one layer, we've got our um, base for the front. So now I will add the horn, and then we will do the hair. Okay, now our horn is finished, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that on a separate layer, although I am going to lower the opacity, just like I did for the uh, face, and we will get started on the hair.
Okay, now that I've got my hair on there, I think that looks pretty good. I just kind of add a little extra swirl. I'm going to erase uh, the horn layer underneath that is poking through the hair. Now that our front angle is finished, we can go ahead and get started on the side angle. I'm going to go ahead and rename my layer first, just to keep track of that. We'll call it front. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide everything else. I'm going to bring this front right about here. And I am going to set up some guidelines before I start my side angle. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer. And then I'm going to make um, a line work layer on top of that. And basically in Psy, what that does is it just lets you um, use vectors, which is just like um, programmed lines, basically. It's not drawn. It's just uh, the program. And I use this to make a very straight line since I don't have a ruler digitally. Looks like that line is nice and straight. And you'll notice that I've made it long enough that um, when I draw my side image over here, these guidelines will just be right where they need to be. So when you're setting up your guidelines, go ahead and make sure that they're long enough that when you sketch out the other one next to the front angle, um, the lines just extend right out. So I'm going to first mark the top of the horn, the top of the ears, the top of the hair, I'm going to go ahead and mark that little curl like right here where that little curl pops up. The top of the brows and the bottom of the bangs. Bottom of the brows. Top of the eyes. Bottom of the eyes. There's the top of the nose. The nostrils, top and bottom. The mouth. The bottom of the nose slash uh, mouth. And the bottom of the hair. So depending on how much detail your, um, your design has, uh, basically the more features that you'll have to keep track of. That's why I have quite a few lines here. Um, so if you have something a little more simple, you probably won't need this many lines. And I just lowered the opacity um, after combining all of those duplicated line layers. And now we can go ahead and use these uh, guidelines to make sure that all of the proportions on the um, a side angle uh, match up with the uh, front angle. That's just a really great way to make sure that um, whoever 3D models the um, uh, your design uh, doesn't have too tough a time with uh, switching angles. I'm going to change the um, guideline layer to multiply and we will put our side right on top of the front layer. And let's get started. So you can see here that I didn't really mark the exact spot that the ear connects with the head, but what I'm doing is I'm using the guidelines that are closest to them as just kind of a reference point for how far away from these lines they are. Um, so you don't need to mark every single thing. You can just use um, some of the lines just to reference because you just want everything to be roughly um, in the same position. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now we have the head for our side angle image. 
Uh, as you can see, I have flipped it so that we're looking at the right side of the unicorn's face. And I did that because um, that's where all of the hair falls is on the right side. Um, there's not a whole lot going on on the left side um, uh, that's uh, different. So I decided to go ahead and just do the right side. And that should be sufficient for modeling this uh, face mask. So I will go ahead and get started with the hair now. And there we go. We have successfully taken uh, one of Jamie's design, converted it into a final sketch first, um, and then we finally uh, converted that sketch into some reference images that our 3D modelers will be able to use. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much.